Hello, my name is Nigel Kravis. I work at IBM in a group called the Power Advanced Technology Support for EMEA team. I'm delighted to bring to you this new video on the first look at a machine called an IC922. It's the new Power9 Open Power Server, announced January 2020, available February 2020. Now, the IC refers to interesting computing. It's a bit of a mouthful, though, so we've been calling it the ICE 922. So here's a little picture of my machine. As the name implies, it's inferencing compute engine workloads that need GPUs like artificial intelligence or some high performance computing workloads. But it also has a lot of disks, so we could just use it as a storage server. It also can be used for Linux KVM hosting, cloud engine for docker containers kubernetes all those sort of words or a mixture perhaps so you are only want a small system to do some testing or prototyping with then you could run the inference and compute and the storage on the same machine just a couple of facts before we actually have a look at the machine in this video power 9 of course up to 40 cpus at 3.8 gigahertz it runs Simultaneous multi-threading 4, so it looks like 160 CPUs you have in here. DDR4 memory up to 2 terabytes. 24 internal drives for 92 petabytes of disk space. 10 PCIe Gen 4 adapter slots for extremely fast I.O. Most importantly, 6 NVIDIA Tesla T4 GPUs can be slotted in the back, along with the usual mixture of Mellanux, regular networks, fiber channel, and the disk drive adapters to get you the storage. Initially, we're running Red Hat Rail 7, more Linuxes are planned. There's a statement of direction with more features available soon. Now, I will make a video covering the facts and features. This is an early machine, so there might be some slight details that have changed, particularly things like uh, labels. My initial impression of the machine is a really nice engineered server. So let's take a look, demystify what I'm talking about. We'll start around the back. This is the 2U of the IC922. Ignore everything below. On the left, there's two power supplies, two kilowatts C20 connections. These are the NVIDIA GPUs, the T4s. There's six full height slots that go in sideways. This slot has the adapter for the storage, the disks at the front. There's four further low profile adapter slots. This is a 10 gig network card. So that's the cable to the keyboard and mouse over here is the VGA there are three 1 gigabit Ethernet ports available in the middle the right hand one goes to the BMC service processor we can use it for IPMI the left one can do that but it's a shared with the main processor so you can have both active at the same time the middle one is just dedicated to the main processor at the top here we have a captured bolt that locks down the lid so we can lift it off we have to undo that first this early machine didn't come with the recommended cable management arm. Now let's have a look around the front. Again, the 2U, ignore everything below that. We have a media tray there. On the bottom left, we have the QR code and serial number. Up here, there's uh, an IBM logo missing at the moment. It's an early machine. Here we have the usual LEDs and start button, and we have a bright blue USB memory key. So there's three bays in here. This is just a cover for a missing bay, if they're optional. You can see through there, there are a row of fans. We'll look at those later. This one's full up, of course. In here, there's four disks and four fillers. They do look very similar. And we'll pull out one of the fillers. You can see just the carrier there to fill up the gap, help the airflow. Um, next I'm going to pull out a disk. Uh, no, I don't think so. It's actually running at the moment, so we won't be doing that. Over here you can see this little tab sticking up. And you pop those down to give you little handles to pull the machine out. Also in the uh, gap that they're covering are two bolts that you can use to bolt it into the frame. So it does give those a tug and pull it forward. Ooh, whoa, careful, careful with the camera. Right, let me move the camera. So this is the machine fully pulled out on the rails. The first part and the second part of the rails. These are the nail heads on the machine that locate onto the rails. There's four of them, usually there's only three. This is the release mechanism to let you push it back in. No sharp edges, it's quite nice. The lid, this is the lid release. As you push that down, then you'll push the lid backwards. So now looking down on the lid, we've released the captured bolt at the back of the lid. We press down these buttons and we can gently ease the lid back and lift it straight off. 
inside we can see left to middle uh, the six fans in a row then there's the air baffle on top of the CPUs and memory and then we have the adapter cages at the back here's the quarter front view two empty displays and the full display well half full of discs at the back of this we have the bay electronics that converts the signals from the discs into the SATA cables that run backwards into the machine pull it around and spin the camera around slightly we can see the electronics there and the cables I think there's three of them that then go back down this conduit down the back these black cables you can follow them around going to the back of the disc adapter in a slot here we are looking at the air moving devices or fans six of them in a row um, quite well engineered we see arrows on them to make sure you put them in the right way uh, they pop out there's two contra rotating fans in there that reduces uh, noise and turbulence coming out the back and they fit back in very neatly now we're looking into the middle of the machine we have CPU 0 and 1 they look back to front to me but it doesn't matter there's always two CPUs we also have the numbers of the dims so we can make sure we place them in the right order when we're adding extra memory we lift off the air baffle here we'll turn it over and we can see that it's built so that it forces the air through the dims or through the power 9 heat sinks if we point the camera down a little bit we'll be able to see the disk bay cables running through a little conduit and then round to the back of the adapter and down in here we have the time of day battery very convenient when it needs to be replaced let's have a little quick look at these conduits where the cables run down nice and solid if you flip this little pin here we'll see they'll come off the nail heads on the side of the case slot in here and here and you'll see this is the little catch for which push the little knob jewel out and locks it on so you line up the nail heads slide it on and flip the pin further back we're looking at the full height adapter cages nice clear diagrams on what to do so you're going to give it a little pull straight up I'll flip this over because this is connected with cables that go to the disk adapters at the front. Here's the NVIDIA Tesla T4, the GPUs. No connections at the back. At the top then is the disk adapter. A little bit of a heat sink on top of that. Let it run cool. We can see that the cables clipped away quite nicely so that it's not going to touch anything too hot. Now there's these uh, little rubber feet that sit down onto the motherboard when we put it back in these cables can go above or below that little flange at the bottom left these two uh, side runners actually fit into the slots inside the back casing here so we'll just get the cables out of the way, line those up, push it down give it a little shove I usually feel across the top to make sure that the back edge is nice and level with the frame this little look, catch in here has a nail head on the lid that fits into that that locks them down when you put the lid back on now if we go for the far one there's no adapters in here so it's a little bit simpler there's a rubber bar there that pushes against the side of the case uh, to stop uh, airflow I guess and maybe um, heat noise vibration then we find the other NVIDIA GPU in here two slots we'll see different sizes in here for the different PCIe connections. This is the slot where the actual cage fits into. Again, those edges fit into the back of the case. Just line that up, slide it down, give it a little tap, and you're good. The outfield across here, if they're in the right position, it's nice and flat. There's a nice view of the entire server. Here's the air baffle going back in. There's little arrows on it to show you where to line it up. When it pops in, it feels nice and flat. It feels good when well, we're ready to put the lid back on. The lid goes back on. The little nail heads on the inside, they fit down that slot. You can see the little dot is going to go down that groove there. I'll just show you that again. Give you the positioning. It goes back in and a centimetre forward. It goes a click and we're all done. Don't forget to put the 
bolt back in at the back to lock the lid on and then we can push it into the rack cable up and power up again there's latches either side fairly standard for most computers in it goes and um, oop, it didn't quite go so I must have released the latches too early let's try again push them in slide it back and we're good to go well, thanks for your time taking this first look at an ICE 922, as I'm calling it. If you'd like one of these in your computer room and got a rough idea of config, get in touch with IBM. We'll give you a price. Usual ways of contacting me down here. If you're watching this on YouTube, give me a thumbs up or a comment. It would be really good. Thank you.